Coming up, AOPA is doing a lot more than just complaining about egregious FBO fees. Harvey and the effect on general aviation. Interesting places to fly to. And turning old airplane parts into l interesting art. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. Build and fly with the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. I think it's time that uh, we in General Aviation stood up to the sky-high pricing that uh, occurs at only a few airports. Uh, these monopolies where they've taken advantage of the situation of being placed in a, in a public domain called an airport and taking advantage of being a sole provider. AOPA is calling for investigations at three airports for egregious fees and more are on the way. AOPA has just filed Part 13 complaints with the FAA about fees and fuel prices at three airports. Waukegan Airport in Illinois, Asheville Regional in North Carolina, and Florida's Key West International. These are among the top five most complained about airports, and all three are signature monopolies. And Signature makes no bones about seeking a monopoly position to extract extra profit. When you look in their public documents, they point out uh, they're able to charge two or some cases three or four more dollars a gallon when they're the only FBO at an airport that's in their public documents. Um, and the way they like to uh, pursue their business model is to wind up to be the only uh, FBO over time uh, at these airports. So it makes them very aggressive. That's not reasonable. That's not right. It's against the rules. It violates the agreement between the FAA and the airport sponsor that the airport will be available for public use on reasonable conditions and without unjust discrimination. The fees and prices at these airports don't pass the test. Park a Cessna 182 overnight at Waukegan, it'll cost you almost $100 if you don't buy gas. And if you do buy Avgas, it'll cost you about $6.60 a gallon. That's $2 more a gallon than nearby airports. They're the sole provider. They have taken a real advantage of the marketplace. Uh, and they have a number of those locations. Rochester, Minnesota, um, we hear people are flying in you know, cancer patients and angel flights and being charged two, three hundred dollars for a ramp fee for 15 minutes. Uh, and we've got to follow through on that. That's not right. If you stop on the ramp, you're going to get charged. You don't have an option, even if you don't need or use any FBO services. And the FAA recognizes that this is a problem they need to fix. Talked to Michael Werda, uh, I mentioned this uh, over the last six months with him, saying that we're going to pursue this. Um, we need to use all means necessary to protect uh, our access to these airports. These are public places, uh, which we shouldn't be funneled out of because the fees are too high. And he agrees. Uh, he also agrees and further agrees that they have got to do a better job. And we're looking for a, a new policy to be coming out to uh, be more clear about their enforcement actions. But and as we said earlier, this is just the beginning. In a statement following our filing, Signature said it was committed to fair and transparent pricing. Let's hope they follow through on that. And if, meanwhile, if you've had a bad experience with too high FBO prices, we want to hear about it. You can report it at the address there on your screen. So this was a big week. A lot, lot going on with these uh, filings of the Part 13 complaints. Uh, have you seen these before? Uh, I haven't seen these particular ones before, but I think I think it's an important issue, and certainly we're all we all want businesses to make a profit. But yeah, it's the, the egregious price. It is, and the important thing is if we do what's right for pilots, in the end, the rest of the things will solve themselves because the pilot activity will increase and that sort of thing, and all the other financial and, and profit motives and that sort of thing will be solved if we can just get more pilots flying and be fair about that. Exactly, and a lot of FBOs do it right. They do. Yeah, that's a good point. And now to that other big issue. No, it's not going away. Air traffic control privatization. Congress returns to Washington next week, and they'll be under the gun to do something with the FAA budget. Money runs out at the end of September. One thing they could do is pass the ATC privatization bill, which would include money for the FAA. But more likely, they'll pass a temporary extension and punt ATC privatization until later in the year. So that's why it's still so important that you contact the people that represent you in Washington and let them know that ATC privatization is a bad idea that will hurt the general aviation community and airports. But the nation's focus right now is on the Gulf Coast and the ravages of Harvey. 
As we record this, the storm has set a new national record for rainfall. Many of the airports in the area are closed, and even if the airport itself is open, there often is no way to get in and out on the ground. AOPA Ambassador Pat Brown is based in Houston, and he's keeping a wary eye on the Bravos River. Texas Gulf Coast Regional, which is LBX, uh, the airport itself is okay. Uh, typically down there in high water situations, access to the airport is the issue. Um, at, uh, Houston Executive, TME, um, I, last I heard, the airport itself was accessible. Well, the airport itself was, was okay, but Cardiff Road, which leads to that airport, uh, typically goes underwater in really heavy rains uh, like we had uh, the last several days. West Houston sits at 111 feet, and so it's underwater. Uh, there's eight inches of water in the terminal at West Houston Airport, and as much as what appears to be about two feet of water in the uh, hangars on the east side, which is where my Comanche is hangered. So we'll wait and see what happens when all that goes, uh, goes away. There are TFRs covering much of the area. At this point, fixed wing aircraft aren't able to help much. However, some of the volunteer organizations like the Air Care Alliance will be looking for pilots and planes to help evacuate people to other locations. Remote Area Medical has driven in two semis with supplies. They'll be flying things in later in the week. And they're looking for medical personnel and other volunteers to help, particularly with people with flat bottom boats. And of course, money donations are always welcome. Pilots could consider RAM, Air Care Alliance, Red Cross. There are lots of worthy charities that will, be, will put the money to good use in Texas, Louisiana, and other places hard hit by the storm. Man, the water down there is unbelievable. And uh, the, the damage to some of the hangars, I've seen some of the wind damage. Uh, I mean, uh, Pat's lucky that not a lot of wind damage, it sounds like there, but. Yeah, and following a lot of my friends on, on Facebook and other social media, there's it's the devastation, obviously, that I don't need to tell everyone is just right. incredible. Yeah, it so. really is. Um, and with all of the refineries along the Gulf Coast, you might be wondering about what this storm will do to avgas prices and availability. Well, we don't know for sure, but some of the people we've talked to predict very little effect. Unlike Jet A, Avgas is refined just a few times a year in a few refineries. This means most of the Avgas that will be used this year has already been refined as in, and is in storage someplace else. So even if the Gulf Coast refineries are shut down for a while, we think you'll still be able to get Avgas at the usual price. Next week, we're having a big party out on the Great Plains. The AOPA fly-in in Norman, Oklahoma, presented by Phillips 66 Aviation, is happening September 8th and 9th. That's the weekend after Labor Day. AOPA Live's Paul Harrop tells us there's still time to make your plans. It's going to rock. That is an understatement. The AOPA fly into Norman will be a really great time. Norman is a really cool town. Um, there's so much to do and the city has expanded so much. In addition to the fly-in with great workshops and a tour of the National Weather Center, there are other sights to see. There are things like the Sam Noble Natural History Museum, which is one of the best university uh, natural history museums in the country, um, just next to the National Weather Center here. Uh, we have art museums that are on campus. Uh, campus Corner is vibrant with lots of restaurants and shops. Campus Corner is the main drag near the University of Oklahoma. There's great places to shop, eat, and be merry. Hey, try a swirl at the Mont. About an hour southwest, you'll find the Wichita Mountains National Wildlife Refuge. But you don't have to go far to have a great time, thanks to many volunteers who have stepped up to help in Norman. We're having a great time. We topped 300 volunteers in terms of uh, recruitment uh, earlier this week. So come for the weather, come for the dining, come for the setting, and come for the fun. Either way, join us. In Norman, Oklahoma, Paul Harrop, AOPA Live. Thanks, Paul, and thank you to all the volunteers who stepped up to help. Do make your plans to be with us in Norman. Find all the information on our website. And something else you'll find on our website, the destination section. Interesting places you can fly, including some near our Norman, Oklahoma fly-in. Well, the destinations area of the website, we're wanting to excite people and give them ideas of where they can go fly. And so we have a series of articles that we're putting out there on all kinds of ventures that you can do. Maybe it's a day trip somewhere near where you live. Maybe it's a fantasy adventure that pilots have been wanting to go on, like flying the Canadian Rockies. 
And these destinations, it's not just what you can do at the destination, but certain series also offer tips on how to fly in. We link to the airports that are along the route um, and explain, for example, if there's a courtesy car or rental car handy so that it makes it easier for pilots to go sightseeing once they're at a location. The most recent addition to the destinations section will interest seaplane pilots, New York's Finger Lakes region, and splashing in to see the Glen H. Curtis Museum. But don't worry if you have wheels. There's a private grass strip you can use near the museum. The info is all online. I've never been to the Curtis Museum. That, that sounds like a cool trip. I'm not either, but there's a lot of uh, seaplane history up there. And uh, the, all the content on the website, we've really been pumping up the amount of content that we have related to travel and destinations and whatnot on the website. So if you haven't checked it out in a while, go there. There's a lot of fun ideas and you might be inspired to take the airplane out and go, go exploring. Absolutely. When we come back, something new to keep you from getting in trouble with the president. And art you can sit on. Stay with us. The smoke is on. He's giving everything that he's got. The Red Bull Air Race World Championship returns to Indianapolis Motor Speedway, October 14th and 15th. Tickets now on sale. Welcome back, and stop me if you've heard this before. Check NOTAMs. Well, some of you flying in New York and New Jersey just aren't listening. There were a bunch of TFR violations near the President's Vacation Retreat in Bedford, New Jersey earlier this month. And he plans to be there again over the Labor Day holiday. The Mid-Atlantic Aviation Coalition sent this poster to airports and FBOs in a four-state area, reminding pilots yet again to check NOTAMs before each flight. Presidential TFRs can pop up on very short notice. But hey, we have an app for that. We clever, cleverly call it the AOPA app. It's free in the Apple and Google Play app stores. The app will send you an alert about TFRs near the phone's geographic location. But wait, there's more. You can read the latest stories from our website and our magazines, watch the latest videos like this one, of course, and you can manage your AOPA membership through the app. And if you're not a member, you can still get the app and then use it to join. Hint, hint. So, have you tried the app yet? I have, I have. It's, it's pretty clever. It's got uh, a lot of great information, content uh, from all across our media channels, including, as I said, this show as well. So, watch it there. And you can check your note hands. Right, good idea. With all of the planning tools at our disposal, it's hard to believe that some pilots still manage to run out of fuel. But the NTSB says better fuel management could prevent some 50 accidents a year. So they issued this safety advisory this week. It offers some common sense suggestions. Don't rely on the fuel gauges. Know how much fuel you have on board and how much fuel your aircraft burns each hour. Leave yourself a reserve and land before you use it. The AOPA Air Safety Institute has a new video called Fuel Management Made Easy. You can find it on their website. Finally this week, AOPA Senior Features Editor Julie Walker has the story of a company that takes forlorn airplane parts, turns them into something really beautiful. Making the old new. Making the old art. That is what Moto Art is all about. Moto Art is a company that my partner Dom and I started back in 2001. Uh, we actually called ourselves Propeller Art first. Propellers, because that's all we had. Donovan and I worked together at a sign company, and Donovan had rescued an old beat up propeller out of the scrap aluminum truck, and uh, he worked and sanded, and that's where I kind of learned that aluminum mirror polishes very well. Dave Hall and Donovan Fell brought the propeller sculptures to the Barrett Jackson car auction in Scottsdale, Arizona. They sold every one they brought. What I got from the show was the enthusiasm of everyone's reaction to what we were selling. Donovan and Dave realized the prop sculptures were just the beginning. Dom and I sat down for lunch one day and we basically mapped out the, the what motor art was gonna be. The future was making functional art. Art, like furniture, out of airplane parts. It all started with a trip to the boneyard. Donovan had found these C-118 doors, these cargo doors, paratrooper doors is what we call them. And I'm out scouting the rest of the boneyard and 
I got big eyes for everything. And, and I come back to the truck and they're loading up these 18 crates inside of the, the, the Penske truck we had. And he bought every single one of them for $100. Well, that was our $2,000 and him and I got in the biggest fight. And when we got back, he stayed up all night and he made the prototype of our first paratrooper door coffee table that we ever had. And I came in the next day and, uh, and it was pretty rough, but I saw where he was going with it and I, that's pretty hot. Uh, ironically enough, the last five that we sold, sold for $15,000 a piece. Now Moto Art makes everything from a sky bar to a 747 sleeper. The artists and mechanics are constantly at work on a new piece. The newest creations at Moto Art are something much smaller, plane tags. We're missing a huge demographic out there because we just can't find something that's affordable. I said, well, let's, let's take these skins and stamp them out and try a luggage tag and, and market them as luggage tags from different aircraft. So I finally got Donovan signed on board and, and we went out and bought this used punch press and we spent five grand and got a die for it. It was the most amazing thing I've ever seen because all of a sudden it was like ding, 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 ding. We sold literally in the first three weeks thousands of these plane tags. Dave recently discovered the sawed off cockpit of a B-1 bomber. And they sent me a link. Uh, that they found on Craigslist and the guy had a B-1B bomber in the backyard. So I called him and, uh, and made a deal uh, and I couldn't believe what I bought it for and uh, he drove it out for me. So he it arrived here on Sunday and, and I was almost doing cartwheels in my shop and he just didn't understand why I was so excited. For Dave, Moto Art is the realization of a dream on a much larger scale. As a kid, I used to build models, and now it's like the real thing as I, as I get older. Julie Walker, AOPA Live. You can read more about Moto Art in the September issue of AOPA Pilot Magazine. Really creative stuff. That's Absolutely. very nice. Interesting, he says that it's, uh, the model we built was the B1B. And uh, that's the only model I ever built as a kid, too. <laughs> and it's a fascinating airplane. Well, now he's got one. <laughs> and that does it for this week. Thanks for watching. And think about those folks underwater on the Gulf Coast. We wish them all the best. Instruments for Professionals.